everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am filming this uh, on the back of filming a podcast, but uh, I really wanted to make another of those project video type of thing and I've just started a new project so I would like to follow along with you guys and uh, to show you my progresses. This is not just a show off type of video but as well a way for myself to uh, keep me keep myself accountable and uh, keep working on this so if you've seen uh, previous videos uh, podcasts uh, you know that i have experimented before with some uh, cable knitting i was knitting the spencer sweater by the brooklyn tweeds uh, which was a big nightmare for me and i ended up unraveling everything so i started again another project another cable sweater and this time i was looking for something that uh, reminds me a little bit of an iron jumper being living in Ireland. I feel like I'm due to need an iron jumper and I really want a very nice uh, big lofty cable sweater. So I found the sweater number 15 by my favorite things so need to wear. It's a top-down sweater knitted starting from the back and joining in uh, with the shoulder increase towards the front working down the bottom and then picking up for the sleeves and the neck band. Looks quite simple so far uh, on the paper and I've only started a little bit here with you. I casted on the second size. The pattern itself calls for 35 centimeters, so I think I'm quite safe. I haven't swatched and I don't plan to because, of course, these 35 centimeters of this. And uh, so far I have only done a repetition of the cables, which turned out to be quite simple to follow, rather than my previous attempt that was literally impossible. I am using a 4mm needle from Haya Haya, the pattern recommends a 4.5, but I know myself, I am a very loose knitter and I always go down a needle size, so that was the choice. And the yarn that I'm using comes in these beautiful cones from Wooly Knits. This is the Misty Grey colorway, it's an 100% uh, British uh, super soft wool and I am holding this uh, double. I'm actually weighting all my balls so that I know uh, how much yarn I would use at the end and so far I have the 50 gram balls here. This yarn is lovely and um, you know I'm fond of this cone of yarns and uh, they are usually very drenched in the spinning oil making the knitting uh, activity very difficult. But this is absolutely beautiful, it's very soft and a dream to knit with, so no problem on that front. The yarn itself is a nice marbled color. There are two strands that you can actually see. One is beige and the other one is a sort of grayish blue that together make this wonderful color here. So, I've just started, I feel like this time is going to be some sort of a success, so fingers crossed and I see you next time. By the way, if I haven't mentioned, this is uh, May 27th, remember that. Hello everybody, today is uh, June the 1st. It's a Pride Month, so happy Pride Month to all of you. I am just checking in with uh, this project. Uh, it's been a few days and I really didn't manage to knit much. This because it's um, a full cable jumper and the cabling takes me so, so long to make. So here we go. I did manage to finish the back piece this is the top back and then the pattern asks you to pick up a number of stitches for the shoulders 
and then start knitting the front left and the front right or something like that. And hopefully at some point we will join in the round. I am extraordinarily pleased with the result, although I feel like it might be a little bit small. But I am going to carry on with this size. Uh, first of all, because it took me so long to knit this little piece. And then secondly, because I still feel like there is the possibility that the garment is actually going to come out uh, the right size. The uh, fabric itself is extraordinarily stretchy. And I don't mind a bit of negativities anyway. But considering that the pattern calls for 35 centimeters of positive ease, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Anyway, yarn-wise, I am on my second 50 gram ball. So this entire piece took uh, about 75 grams of uh, this super soft wool, I suppose is, if I'm right, it's from Woolly Knits, but you probably know this already because you've seen the previous uh, clip. Anyway, I will keep uh, knitting on and I'll check with you later. Bye! Hello everybody! Today it's uh, June the 4th and tomorrow is my birthday by the way and I would like to give you a little bit of an update on the sweater I'm making. So here is the update. As you can see from last time we have a sort of a hole in the middle. So basically this part is what you've seen before. This is the back of the jumper and uh, you pick up stitches on the shoulder part and then you start to knit in the front. And I am kind of at the beginning of the front so I still have a little bit to go on this cabling situation before everything is joined in the round. I think the next step will be to shape the armhole. If you imagine, if you put together the back and the front, you will get the armhole. So there will be, I suppose, a series of increases in order to get the um, length of the armhole as well. And uh, yeah, it's been extraordinarily addictive. Uh, the wool is amazing to knit with. And uh, I got as well this little guy here. This is a cable needle from Clover. And before I used this cable needle here, which is from, I would say Pony or something like that. Uh, this is a straight needle, this is a hook shape, U-shape needle and this has been a game changer indeed in terms of speed and uh, accessibility or dexterity, is that a word? Well, it's, it's so much easier to make cables with this one. Uh, this is all right. Uh, the point that I found difficult is that this, although it has a little indent, it lays basically horizontal on your knitting while you are cabling, while you are picking up the stitches from the other needle. Uh, but this one um, hangs perfectly straight and there's no risk of the stitches to fall down or get lost and then you just keep knitting. So basically you pick up from the shorter um, side for the shorter point and then you twist it and you knit from the longer point. Craziness. It's uh, like a couple of euros worth and they come in different sizes all together on a bunch so I don't know why I didn't uh, get this before, but it's amazing. I am extraordinarily low with the jumper. Still, I have some reservation on the size. I probably should have got up, should have gone up a size. But uh, let's see how it turned out. Otherwise, this will be a prototype or a lovely knit for a present. Uh, last thing uh, for today's update is the amount of yarn that I'm using and I'm on my third 50 gram ball of yarn. 
So the um, back piece and the little front is 150 grams worth of yarn. I'm not planning to knit too much on this uh, from now to the end of the month. This because I will, this is my birthday weekend, it will be bank holiday, so I'm taking some time to enjoy myself, meet some friends, family, and then I will be uh, away for a week of holidays. So all in all, it gets to the end of June and uh, yeah, but it's coming along quite quickly, so happy days. That's it for today. I will see you a year older and uh, I hope you have a lovely day. Bye bye. Hello and good morning. It's been a while since I gave you guys an update. Today is June 28th. It's a Tuesday and it's very early in the morning. Hence my face is completely sleepy. Anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick update because in the past week or so, I've been intensely working on this jumper and um, the point is that I finished the body, I needed one uh, full sleeve and uh, I almost finished the second sleeve, but I finished the yarn as well. I end up playing yarn chicken all the way through, hoping to get to the ribbing and there wasn't any yarn left, which is very interesting because the cone of yarn allegedly uh, was 500 grams, but I haven't used 500 grams. I'm on the realm of 300 grams altogether. Now, after about 10 minutes of a complete panic, I figured out that we have a few options here. The first one, the easiest option, go to the Bullinis website and buy a new cone of yarn. I already tried to get through the process until the checkout stage and uh, one 500 gram cone of yarn, of the same yarn, cost me 45 British pounds, which is around 50 euro. And uh, the grand scheme of things is not a lot, but uh, I probably would need to wait a little bit until payday or whatever to be able to get a yarn. The second option will be to try and source it online through Facebook groups, Instagram stories, or I don't know, robbery marketplace and stuff like that. Hopefully someone has a couple of uh, gram, undergrams to sell me and uh, might kind of solve the issue. And uh, the third option that I have here is to knit the collar and all the ribbings in another color on the same yarn base. I think I have a cone of like a lighter blue, but now I don't know if I like the combination of the two. I haven't seen anybody else's, anybody else's project on <laughs> Ravelry doing that. So I will weigh my option and I will update you for the result. I have to go to a dentist uh, in like an hour or so. That's why I kind of feel so early in the morning. I probably won't be able to um, record uh, the final update today because my face will be completely numb. But uh, I will see you very soon. Bye bye. Hello. So it's the day after. It's uh, the 29th of June. And it's another morning, my dentist appointment went uh, all right. I can still feel the pain, but here we go. And it's finally finished. I am not going to give you a tour now because the jumper needs uh, a good uh, bit of blocking and some stretching. And I'm wearing my running shorts. Anyway, um, out of the three or four options that I kind of um, gave myself yesterday on the yarn chicken situation, I end up uh, not choosing any of them. So I was reading the pattern and at some point in the um, uh, sleeve construction, 
They mentioned that um, generally the sleeves or the garment will grow by one repeat after blocking. So, conscious of that and conscious of the fact that uh, the body was a little bit too long for my liking or for uh, the body, it wasn't too long, but it was just fine sitting down on my waist, I decided to rip back a little bit. So I basically ripped back the ribbing at the waist and one repeat of the chart of the, the cable. And I basically used the uh, yarn that I got from there to finish uh, the sleeve, the collar and uh, finally the waist ribbing. A couple of things that I kind of want to figure out that I want to mention, the color piece. The pattern uh, recommends for a folded hem. So basically you need a long collar, you fold it to the inside and you sew the inside together. I, of course, didn't do that because of uh, the yarn chicken situation. All and all, I really like this and uh, it's a little bit um, short if I can say, but I am really hoping that uh, the blocking and the stretching and of course the yarn relaxing a bit will make it fit perfectly. And excuse my um, trousers here, but as you can see it just sits down on the waist. This is a t-shirt that I'm wearing underneath and it's uh, yeah, just about. So Conscious of that, we'll see and uh, hope for the best. All in all, this is what I have left of that cone of yarn. For the um, binding off of the bottom hem, I had to join in all the ends because I literally didn't have any yarn left, which is quite uh, interesting. Anyway, all in all, I'm really happy with this pattern. I have bought some more yarn, I have some um, Latlopi and uh, some other heathery yarn from Drops uh, that I kind of don't remember the name, but uh, yeah, I'm planning to uh, knit this again just because it took me nothing time-wise and uh, yeah, it was such a pleasure to knit and the pattern is so well explained and um, cabling is so satisfying that I definitely want to make another one and I actually think it fits well. Now next time I will be conscious of uh, having enough yarn to knit it all but um, yeah uh, so I am going to give you the last update as soon as this jumper is uh, blocked. I'm going to take it off now because it's extremely warm and uh, put it in water. Hello everybody, today is the 1st of July and uh, I am finally done. As you can see here, I'm wearing my uh, new jumper. It's actually very beautiful, it's probably one of the most beautiful jumpers I managed to make and I'm super happy with this. I am wearing this um, on the top of a shirt, this because I have a few meetings going on and at least bottom up I need to be kind of presentable. But the yarn that I use is so soft that doesn't require a short at all. If you have been following me on Instagram or here on uh, YouTube, there was a little bit of a drama. There was a yarn chickening, which uh, thankfully I solved. And if I remember well, I've talked about that in my previous clip. And the latest drama was uh, blocking or not blocking. So I ask the internet, as you do, and uh, the suggestions were a little bit um, confusing, probably. Some people seem to enjoy blocking a cable sweater. Some other people seem to recommend not to block them um, with the fear that the cable pattern will flatten down. So I did some research and then at the end of the day, I went with my gut feelings. I had to ask because this is my first cable project or proper cable project. I've made uh, small uh, socks and hats before, but never a full jumper. So I didn't know what to do. 
And considering the yarn that I was using, the yarn comes really drenched in spinning oils. It's not as bad as Hose Garn or JC Rennie or other wool combs that I've tried, but still retains a lot of that spinning oil. So I didn't kind of feel safe to wear the jumper or, you know, the smell of the jumper wasn't great because of the oil. And as well, the yarn didn't really bloom much because it was all stick together, stuck together, stuck together. You got it because of the oil. So I ended up deciding on washing it. I washed it with some a wool wash, a lot of hair conditioner and uh, some lukewarm water left there for about 25 minutes, half an hour, just the time for another Zoom meeting. And then I pin it down to my blocking mats. I decided to go for somewhat of a hard blocking because I was afraid that the length of the jumper wasn't uh, proper. As uh, per my previous clip, I ended up unraveling a little bit of the length of the body to have yarn basically to knit up the, the end of one sleeve and the collar. So I was kind of afraid of that. Uh, and I needed to get that tiny bit of length that I missed through the blocking. It turned out that uh, indeed the jumper grew quite a bit and uh, it's, it just fits perfectly. If I go back, I would uh, definitely do a little bit of uh, more ribbing in the collar piece and on the sleeve piece. I'm going to put some uh, clips of uh, the actual garment afterwards. Uh, but yeah, um, so far so good. I loved it. It fits really, really well. It's extraordinarily warm and although we are in the middle of the summer here in Ireland, it's freezing cold and a jumper is just about the better thing that I could wear right now. So in terms of uh, modifications, I got a lot of questions on here and on Instagram about uh, the modification I made on the way. If you look at the original pattern, it's designed for a women body, a woman body, a female uh, body, and the shape is 100% female-like. So to fit a man, uh, I had to make some modification. And the first and uh, most kind of uh, easy modification that I made is on the body itself. As per usual, I went down um, a few stitches on the armor underarms towards the end of the body in order to taper just a tiny bit the boss. I did that going to the creasing on the pearl side on the little pearl uh, stitches between a cable and the other. I really hope that makes sense. But you know, if you need a, a cable pattern, you get a cable, you get pearl stitches, you get another cable. I decreases within those pearl stitches so that the cable would look nice uh, together and wouldn't uh, really be disturbed much. Um, I just decreases four stitches on the side and four stitches on the other going down towards the waist. Uh, on the waist side, the next modification that I made is adding uh, a few centimeters of ribbing. The pattern calls for a very, very short ribbing on the waist, but I feel like um, for my liking, uh, I want something that fits a little bit better the waist, that is not flaring out. So getting that a bit of structure on the ribbing is quite good, in my opinion. The next modification, and probably the more apparent, are the sleeves. Uh, if you are familiar with the pattern or check it out on Ravelry, I'm going to put the links below here. The sleeves are very flary and they do not decrease at all from picking up the stitches all the way down. That was a big problem for me. I absolutely don't feel like I would wear such a garment and um, I don't think it's uh, my cup of tea to be honest. So I had to make some modifications there. And the way that I went is probably a little bit rocky, but uh, I couldn't figure out another way to modify uh, the sleeves. So I used whatever um, sleeve 
uh, tapering I use generally for my garment, which is decreasing two stitches every three centimeters, uh, all the way down from the very top to the cuff. Uh, every three centimeters decreasing two stitches on the inside of the sleeve, right where you pick up the stitches from the underarm. Um, it's a rocky because now I don't know where you can see that, but at some point the cables are kind of melting together. Could be a designer feature, could be just a big mistake. I haven't managed to figure out how to decrease the knots of the actual cables in order not to get this mishmash and bunging together of cables, but it worked very well. The sleeves are really fitted and uh, I'm sure I would wear this type of uh, design or this type of uh, construction so much more than the flaring out sleeves. I did keep more or less the very short ribbing on the sleeve cuff. Not for a choice, but because I didn't have enough yarn. Turns out that they are completely fine, I don't mind that. I actually like the look of the cables going down almost right to the cuff. And that little bit of ribbing just keep everything together nicely. For the ribbing side, although I always say I don't like twist ribbing, I did it this time because it was suggested uh, in the pattern and uh, yeah, I just wanted to try. So everything is um, twisted ribbed and I really like it very much. So this was uh, a nice little adventure. All in all, the pattern is very well written. It took me no time at all, considering that I had a week of vacation in the middle and the entire garment took me what? three weeks, probably three and a half weeks, uh, which is nothing for a jumper. I think it was because the way of the yarn is quite bulky, it's uh, kind of a decay way yarn, heavy decay actually, and the needle that I use are quite large, so just flew through, but it was a pleasure to knit with. I can't wait to cast on another one of these just because it's so beautiful and it fits so well. I just need to find a nice yarn to use. If you have any recommendation for me for a nice yarn that can hold the cables well and sturdy, but at the same time is nice and fluffy, please let me know. I would avoid this time woolen its cotton, um, not because they are bad. I love the yarn, I love the softness, and I really, really love to knit with them. But on a 300 grams cone, I couldn't get this jumper. This is just uh, 300 grams all together. And you know, with ends and uh, liking of ribbings a little bit too long, more long and uh, you know, uh, making the jumper uh, fitting a man body so the length is a little bigger. I wasn't expecting to run out of yarn and uh, that was really disappointed. I couldn't get another cone of yarn, this because uh, import taxes and shipping is just over expensive. I would end up uh, paying so much more for a yarn that uh, yeah, is probably worth all the money, but I could really get uh, very expensive, uh, high quality hand dyed yarn if I spend the money. So, you know, balancing the pros and cons, it doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, let me know your suggestion. I can't wait to knit another one of these. I really want another um, of these sweaters in my wardrobe, perhaps a blue color, you know, my uh, passion for blue colors. Anyway, uh, that is it. I really hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, it was uh, a pleasure to film. And if you try to knit this jumper, let me know what you think and as well, please, consider to subscribe to my channel. I think we are about 2,000 subscribers now, so I'm thinking about a nice giveaway, but everything will come together in my next podcast, of course. I wish you a very nice weekend, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.